Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. We're going to look at one verse today. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. The title of the message is, Remember Who You Are. Remember Who You Are. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. The Bible says, But God commended his love toward us. In that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. Brother Nathan, can you please pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything given us, Lord. And thank you so much for loving us so greatly that you would die on the cross for our sins, Lord. And Lord, I don't know, it's, just, it's one thing I just can't fathom, Lord, why you would be willing to love us so much, love me so right. much. Even though I sinned against you, even though I've broken your laws, even though I've done things that really should be, I should be put in the lake of fire, but yet you still took that payment for us. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you, Lord, for everything given us, Lord. I pray that you be there in this service, Lord. I pray that you speak with Pastor Jay, Lord. I pray that you break our hearts. I pray that you soften up our hearts, Lord. I pray that we be focused on what you have to say through Pastor Jay, Lord. Thank you for everything given us, Lord. I pray all this in Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Remember who you are. According to Romans 5, 8, you and I are sinners. And that's something that you and I have to remember on a daily basis. One thing that happens to human beings is that when you get comfortable in your life, when things, anything goes well in your life, you tend to forget who you really are. That's why we have protests all the time. That's why we have spoiled children everywhere, spoiled adults everywhere, yeah. spoiled Christians everywhere, right. because you don't know who you really are. Right. Bible says you are a sinner. Amen. You and I are nothing above that, right. but we're definitely equal or below that. Right. Yes. We're all just sinners. A lot of times you think you are somebody because you get more responsibility because someone say you're doing good job because you think when you compare to someone else, you're better than that person. As Christians, you and I have to always be careful of getting to a point where we're more than just a sinner saved by grace. God does not use any Christian who thinks they're more than just a sinner saved by grace. God does not use any Christian who has any type of pride gets in their way. God does not use any Christian who doesn't show humility in their life. As New Year is already passing us by, and we're approaching pretty soon, you know, February, March, spring, and, you know, if Lord tarries, we're going to end the year, you and I have to remember who we are. I mean, number one thing is, who are you, right? If someone were to ask you, who are you? You know, people will say, you, you give your name, right? Or sometimes you say your ethnicity, right? You know, Korean American, you know, mixed American, many cases, right? You know, but the real answer is always, I'm a sinner. Amen. You know, when you realize that you're a sinner, your mindset will always be in the humble state. Yes. Because what was wrong with these Pharisees many times? What's wrong with many of the so-called religious leaders out there? They think there's something, right. Yes. right? You know, even as a pastor, you're just a pastor because Lord, you know, gave you that role. But does that mean that, you know, I look down on people? No, I can't. If I were to do that, then I'm out of here just like that. And as a Christian, you should never, ever compare yourself to another Christian. I mean, that's given. I mean, can you imagine? Like, you are full of lies, right? You know, kids, you know, when you're playing around, you know, you might catch some lies. I mean, and then you're comparing yourself to another kid with lies, right? Yeah, I have a less lies than you, you know, so I'm better than you. No, no, most likely, you know, young people, I remember, I mean, you know, if the people had lies, you know, we shave our head when we're little, you know? 
I don't know about the girls because you don't want to shave their head, but it takes them a while to do it. Or even like if you have, if you just play it out there with the kids, right? You play some soccer in the mud and you're like, oh yeah, I'm cleaner than you, you know, because I have less mud on me, right? No, you are literally same dirty person. And as Christians, you always have to remember, you're that dirty sinner just saved by grace only. There's no reason for you to look at someone next to you and say, you know what, I'm cleaner than that person. How do you know, right? Do you think that you're really that pure, holy, better than another Christian? No. You always have to understand that because to me, as your knowledge grows, and without the right preaching and, you know, getting right with the Lord on a daily basis, the common characteristic of a Christian is to look down on other people. Wow. It's very, very true. Yeah. I mean, when you see someone working out there in a, how should I say, consider, you know, less educated job, do you look down on those people? Because I know you do. Yeah. Why? Because of your parents many times. If your parents tell you that, hey, I never want you to become like that person, not for the reason of you, you know, doing your best. They know that you could accomplish some things. But because they tell you because they look down on those people, your parents are wrong. If your husband or wife tells you that, they're wrong too. That's why some of you Christians are not a good witness for Lord Jesus Christ. Because you think you're better than other people. You think you're better than those people considering a lowly state. So you don't, you don't even go to them. You only go to a nice dress people, right? More educated, understanding. But Lord came to save sinners. Amen. You're a sinner. Yes. I mean, if we want, went through a spiritual x-ray, man, you're worse than the infidels yeah. out there. Filthy. I mean, myself included. Then you have to get that notion out of your head. And if your parents or if your loved one, anybody tell you that, hey, you know, I don't want you to ever become like that. Of course, you don't want to be in prison, right? I mean, that's a good advice. If yeah. they say, hey, you know, I never want you to be in prison. Okay, <laughs> right? I mean, that makes sense. But when it comes to when they're comparing you and comparing other people with the nominal jobs and positions or whatnot, then you got to be like, man, mom, dad, something's wrong with you. Yes. You're really proud. Oh, I, mean, you, I mean, you're just like the devil, Pride has gotten you. I mean, what was devil's biggest issue? Pride. And don't you think that you and I will be always be prone to pride somewhere? Amen. Right? Yeah. So you should always be thankful for who you are, saved sinner, and you should never look down on any other human beings out there. Yes, That's why you always say, never say never. Right. You know, I mean, LA area is full of homeless population, probably the most, right, in the nation, right? Yes. And as far as, you know, developed countries are concerned, maybe number one, you know, third world countries, we have a lot more out there. And you're always telling yourself, you know, I'm never going to become homeless, right? Never, never, you know, you know, like that. But who knows? I mean, don't say never. Yeah. I mean, with that pride, God could take your job away. Without pride, God could take your health away. Yes. Without pride, God could take your family away. It happened to Job, and you think you're more perfect and righteous than Job? No, sir. Then when you look at human beings, I mean, you have to have a different perspective. What Lord Jesus Christ knew, and he knows who we are. Wicked sinners who can never get out of trouble then he had compassion on us. And if you remember who you are, just a sinner saved by grace, then you're going to look at other people as just sinners saved by grace, but with compassion yeah. on an equal playing field. Yeah. Let brotherly love continue. you got to have brotherly love, right? Yes. Love your brother, brother, brother. I mean, come on, saying. I mean, what does the word brother have? If you drop BR, right? You have others, right? Then 
if you really want to show your love to the world out there, you got to show love to others, yes. right? Not just your brothers only right. in Christ. You have to show it to other folks out there. Everyone. Man, one thing I tend to really get, you know, angry is when we see this attitude, it comes from me as well, is that, you know, we're a Bible believer who have the truth, King James Bible Amen. truth. Yeah. And then you see some folks who still, you know, not 100% standing on the truth. And then you start looking down on them. You know, I told you King James is the perfect word of God. How can you not believe it, right? How can you be standing on false doctrine? How can you be going to false church? Because they're not perfect. Neither were you. Amen. Only by grace you have gotten the truth and you have believed the truth and you're standing for the truth. Some people, it takes more time. Instead of you ridiculing them, always criticizing them, you got to have a compassion, yes. trying to reach out to them. Of course, if they're on the pulpit and doing wicked stuff, that's totally different, right? I mean, if you're going to have like Joel Austin of the crowd, I mean, you're not going to be like, yeah, I agree with everything Joel does. You know, he needs some compassion and stuff, you know. No, I mean, he's leading many, many souls to hell. That's right. But as a, just a regular person who's seeking the truth, but they are just not mature enough, then you have to remember where you were yes. when you just got saved before you got saved. If you and I can go always to the time when we first got saved, to the time of our first love, we'll always remember that you and I are just sinners. If this year continues, and if you look at yourself, and you don't see yourself just a sinner saved by grace, then your spiritual life is messed up. If you were to talk to each other, I think you could kind of get it. That's why when you have fellowship, you kind of be able to gauge each other's spiritual state, right? And what comes out of your mouth will show who you really are. Yes. Because if it's in your mind, and in your heart, it's going to eventually come out of your mouth. And it's also going to eventually come out of your action. And some of your action is always, how should I say, almost like, you're defiant against who you really are. Right. You're trying to show yourself as something that you are not. Right. It's like, you know, pig putting on a lipstick, trying yeah. to look pretty, right? You're always going to be a pig. Amen. You're a sinner, and you're always going to be a sinner. Yes. Don't think that, oh yeah, I'm now... You know, since I've been a Christian for 10, 15 years, you know what? I should get a special privilege. <laughs> what privilege do you need? More time to sin? You know, more, you know, time to break the laws in the Word of God? More time to disobey, right? More time to not read the Word of God but do something else? You're like, oh, God's going to give me more grace because I've been a Christian for a long time. No, that's completely devil's thinking. Yes. As you become older and as you become, you know, more mature Christian, you actually have to be more sensitive to those things. It's hard to see someone who's been saved for over 10, 15, 20 years act like little babies, right? Yes. Yeah. But in Bible believing churches everywhere, there are many, many old Christians who act like babies. Great. Why is that? Why? Because you don't know who you are. You're just a sinner saved by grace. Right. Okay, so someone offended you, right? And because a lot of times it's you, you know, your problem. Just like, you know, one of the greatest sayings by Bob Jones Sr. is that the problem is with you, right? Yes. The problem is with you, 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 you. Don't look at anybody else, right? So problem is with you, and when you believe that saying, and you look at yourself, 
then what is my problem? Have you ever thought about that? In order to find solution in your life, you have to know what your problem is. And as a sinner, you kind of have to go back and reflect, you know, past few months, how you've been behaving. Because it doesn't come right out of, you know, yesterday. It's been building up in your Christian walk. Then within the past year or couple years, because of who you are and who you were, you are where you are right now. And if you're not someone, you know, you and I can't really say I'm chief of sinners, right? Like Apostle, you know, Paul said. I mean, did you okay many Christians to be killed? So, you know, don't be a fool and say that, you know, I'm the chiefest of sinners. You're not, right? That's another pride in the way, right? You know, like, you know, I'm a bigger sinner than all of you guys, right? Get that pride out of the way. You know, some people are like, you know, oh, yeah, you know, I thank God for saving me because I'm such a great sinner. You don't have to announce it to people. We already know that you're a great sinner because I'm a great sinner. Everybody is a great sinner. And, and I strongly discourage for, dis, discourage for all of you guys to just try to have an open conversation and just talk about your sins, right? It's not good, no. you know, it, because devil's going to use it. Yes. And then other party, you know, a lot of times, their lips cannot stay shut. Right. Yes. They're going to tell their family, and the whole church is going to know about it. So when it comes to testimony of, you know, your past sins, you know, it's, don't talk about it, right? You know, unless it is something that really going to help a brother who's going through the same situation, right? But, right. well, you know, when we have testimony time, you shouldn't be like, you know, oh, yeah, I, I always robbed the bank, you know, and I got caught and went to jail for a few years, you know. My, I, used, I assaulted people many times, you know, right? And I... Uh, I, I was a con artist, you know, I frauded people all the time. Then how do you think your brethren's going to treat you? They have their flesh, yeah. you know. They're not going to look at you the same way, yeah. right? So that's why they say less information is better, Amen. you know. Yeah. To know less about you reveals, you know, less dirt from you. Yeah. So it is very important for you to understand that as I live 2023 20, and beyond, I'm just a sinner, saved by grace. And there's no reason for me to look anybody up or down. I look everybody the same, saved by sinner. Or someone who's not saved, they need the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Whether they're a millionaire or they're homeless, right? Whether they're well-dressed or they're not well-dressed, you reach out to every single person. Because you yourself is... Reminding yourself that, you know what? I'm just a sinner. They need Jesus Christ just like me, right? right. You can't be like, ah, they don't need Jesus Christ. Or someone else could talk to them because, you know, I can't smell the stench. I can't stand the stench, you know. Oh, you know, they seem to be in a, such a higher class than me. You know, I can't talk to them either. Then... Who are you ever going to witness to, right? When the Bible says every creature, you have to be out there. That's why, you know, when you tell yourself and you remind yourself that I'm just a sinner saved by grace, then you could be a better witness, right? You could be driving the most expensive car in the world. Don't matter to me. You need a Savior just like me, Amen. right? Yes. You are, you know, unfortunately in this rain, you know, sleeping out in the, you know, this inclement weather, you need Lord Jesus Christ, just like me. Then, you know, any pride that you might have had will just eventually go away. Then humility will just take your heart, take your place. As Christians, when you remember who you are, you will have that humility. A lot of times people are so proud and they act like jerk, even amongst the family members, right? If your own family members get into argument, why do you guys get into argument? Because a lot of times you think you're better than the other person. Your opinion, right? right. You feel like my way of thought and my you know, thinking is better than you. 
That's why, you know, a lot of times there's a bickering and quarrel and fighting between husband and wife, children and parents, you know, yes. all the family members, because always someone thinks that they're better than the other person. But if you get that equation out of the way, I mean, would you really have reason to fight? You don't. That's why you, this year, just remember, just check, ask yourself, how proud have I been as a safe sinner? You know, I mean, have I been really humble, have shown humility in the sight of my God? You know, have you? Or is it still the same like 2022 and before? You're just a proud Christian looking down on other Christians, looking down on unsaved people, looking down on anybody, you know, who doesn't live up to your standard. What is your standard, by the way? You know, what's your standard? Do they have to have a college degree for you to have a conversation? Do they have to have a home, house, certain type of car? Do they have to, you know, like eat certain type of food, right? For you to actually, you know, put them into the standard of yours? You know, get rid of it. I mean, get rid of it. Whether they went to college or they never went to college shouldn't matter to you. Amen. It matters to your parents, but they're fools. Yes. Right? Young people. Right? You do not want to be like your parents. I tell you this. Amen. Because you're going to turn out exactly like your yes. parents. Yeah. We have a lot of young people here. Right? Oh, man, you're talking better about my parents. I mean, I have to talk about certain things that will make you a better Christian. Amen. And if your parents are the hindrance, then who are you going to choose? Right. You're going to choose the Word of God and what He tells you to yes. do? Or are you going to choose what your parents say? No. Uh, you know, whether because of all this advancement of technology, it doesn't matter nowadays, especially in Asian culture, you know, education is always number one. So you don't remember who you are. You're just a safe sinner. It's not, <laughs> you went to UC school, it's not like you went to this, you know, Ivy League college, it's not about you going to this, you know, prestigious places, it's not. But Asian parents make you think like that. Then you have to get out of it. Who cares if you went to what school? If Lord doesn't open doors for you, you're not going to get the job that you need. Right. I mean, you could have a Harvard degree, but Lord says, you know what, you're such a proud Christian, okay, I'll just open door for you to just work at McDonald's, right? Or any fast food. Then you should be thankful. You shouldn't even look down on that either. Yes. Right? But your mentality is always like, you know what? You know, all those minimal jobs, you know, I got to look down on them. Right? I mean, you're the type of people that should spit, their f <laughs> spit on your food, right? Because your attitude just shows that way. Yes. You know, it's uh, disheartening to see in a Bible-believing culture, you know, where people are always discriminating against each other, right? You know, I mean, you yourself are the same body of Christ. Yeah. You're the same body. That's why it's so funny that if you're a dumb and then you're looking at your arm, Say, like, man, arm, you know, you are less than me, you know, dumb. Dumb's telling arm, you're useless. I don't want to talk to you. I look down on you. And arm's like, you know what? Okay. You're not going to have a right function without me being there, right? So you tend to forget how important each part of body of Christ is. That's why it, it doesn't matter, right? You know, you could hate me. Your parents could hate me. I don't care, right? You know, the only thing that matters for me is if I'm right with the Lord, Amen. right? You should have the same attitude. It doesn't matter if your parents hate you. If they are a Bible-believing Christian, at the end of the day, they're going to understand that what the Word of God says is more important than what they think. Amen. Yes. Then you know what happens when you don't remember who you are? You start that blame game. Man, you, you love that blame game. It's never your fault. 
It's never your fault. It's your upbringing, right? It's the someone you married, right? It's the children that you have, right? It's your grandma, grandpa, it's your cousins, right? It's your coworkers, right? It's the, it's the world, right? I mean, we know the world's going straight down to hell, right? Yes. I mean, but we want to make sure that, you know, out of those many, we want to witness and so that they'll get saved because that's God's will. When you don't remember who you are, you're going to blame everybody else. Because it's never your fault. Have you ever met someone? It might be you. Have you ever met someone when something goes wrong? That person blames everybody else. And maybe at the end, they include themselves. But that's rare. It's like everybody else, right? You know, my car doesn't work because, you know, my wife, my husband, they didn't do their job. My children didn't do their job, right? My uncle, you know, man, it's everybody. But it was your fault that you never had the right maintenance, you know, schedule for your car. It was, it was your fault the way you drove your car, right? And it's your fault that you, you know, messed up your car. But it's never, never your fault. Are you that type of person? Man, as a Christian, do you always look to blame someone else? I mean, what are you going to do? If you go back to the time when you weren't safe, are you going to be like, God, I'm a sinner because of my mom. I'm a sinner because of my dad. I'm a sinner because of my teacher. I'm a sinner because of my you know, cousin. So save me. That's not the right condition to get saved. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you don't blame it on anybody else. You just tell God that I am a sinner. You're a sinner on your way to hell. That's why you need someone to save you. That's why you accept Jesus Christ. Then why does that mind never translate after you get saved? You always go back to your old nature. It's never my fault. Get rid of that. Bob Jones Sr. says what? The problem is with you. Then it's always your fault. It doesn't matter. Maybe nine, okay, maybe one or 0.01% of the time it's not your fault, okay? Rare occasion. But 99% of the time, the things do not work in your life that you try to blame others, it's because of you, right? It's your fault. Just admit it and start from there. It doesn't matter if you grew up in a bad environment. I mean, I feel for you, right? It doesn't matter if you didn't have things like other people had. But if you're saved, God said he'll provide you with all your needs. He promised. Then why would you say it's my mom's fault, my dad's fault that I don't have a nice car right now? It's my mom and dad's fault that I have to pay for college, Right? It's my mom and my dad's fault that I don't have a good job. It's my mom and my dad's fault that, you know, I don't live in a house. It's my mom and my dad's fault that, you know, I don't have the, you know, best purse, shoes, you know, all this clothes. I mean, don't you feel, like, kind of ashamed? Don't you feel like you want to find the hole and go in there? Such a murmur and complainer you are and always blaming others. I mean, that's one of the faults that we have inherently as a Christian, as a human being. We always try to blame someone else. Look at Eve. <laughs> Who was she trying to blame, right? Yeah, the serpent, right? I mean, it's, you see it, someone, you know, who committed the sin first time, right, as a human being, blaming in others. So it's natural for you to blame others, but that's not what God wants you to be. If I were to remember all the time that I'm just a sinner saved by grace, I don't deserve anything. Everything I receive is by mercies and grace of God. There's no reason for me to blame anybody. All I'm going to be is being thankful, right? Don't blame the people who's not here anymore, right? Oh, 
my grandpa, if he had more money, you know, to give to my parents, I wouldn't be like this, right? I mean, because love of money is root of all evil, and it's no different to Christians. Many times you fall into temptation, many times you fall into sin because of your love of money. Many times Christian families break apart because of love of money. Many times people hate each other. Many times people look down and look up on each other because of money. Then remember who you are. Money should not dictate who you are. Money should not dictate how you think about other people. Because if you're nice to me, because you think that I have money, then I definitely don't want to be your friend, right? If someone's treating you nice because you have more material stuff, if you don't, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to leave you. Same thing. So don't let those things dictate who you are. It's very hard, though, in this society. Everything's about money, 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 and everything's about your materialistic things. But as Christians, you've got to be opposite of the world. If, if the world is all about, you know, possession, money, and stuff, you have to think otherwise. Now, I'm not saying that you go out there and be a bum out there. Of course not. You have to live a balanced life. But where's your focus, right? Where's your priority? Where's your heart at? Your heart should always be at the Lord Jesus Christ and the Word of God and knowing that you're just a sinner saved by grace. And when you remember that you're just a sinner saved by grace, you know that you're a child of God. And that's the greatest blessing. Remember that you're a child of God, right? I mean, think about it. When you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, there's nothing in this universe that's going to separate you from love of God. There's nothing that's going to separate you from you going to heaven once and for all after you die. Then when you know that, man, shouldn't you have a kind of a more of a joyous life in your life? And you guys are all always, some of you are always down. You're like a Debbie Downer wet blanket. You know, it's like, man, you're worse than those unsaved people out there. You're worse than like those third world country folks. They have a little bit of water, clean water. You know how happy they are? I mean, in Africa, I mean, a lot of times, everything that they drink is dirt water with animal feces in it. And their diet is always like mostly milk, goat milk, cow milk. But you have so much blessing from the Lord. And... All you're going to do is just complain and complain. Right. Because you don't know who you are. Know who you are. Amen. You're just a sinner saved by grace. But you are still a child of God. And God's providing all your needs. Man, shouldn't you be hollering hallelujahs and giving glory to God every single yes. day? Hey. Instead of complaining to God, oh, Lord, I've been praying about that car, praying about that house. Man, I've done everything I could but you still haven't blessed me with it. Maybe because he has a reason, that's why. Because once he gives that to you, he knows you're going to be the most proud Christian ever. You're going to be the person who's going to be telling everybody, hey, I want to give glory to God because, you know, I worked so hard in my life, so God gave me this. I don't want, who wants to hear that, right? At the end of the day, you're just giving glory to yourself. I I mean, what's wrong with you? It's like you just don't know who you are. Isn't that funny? When you meet someone who was dirt poor, but suddenly they became rich, and then they act like they've been rich all their life. Man, those are folks probably you don't want to be friends with. You don't want to hang around with, right? They're like, yeah, you know. I was poor one day, once I was poor, but now, you know, I have everything. I thank God for that. But in reality, what they're telling you is that, man, you know, I've done everything, and I I deserve all the glory, 
You know, God's just there. God gave me what belongs to me. He gave me what was rightful to me. Isn't it funny how you guys think the same? When something good happens to you in your life, yeah, I deserve it. God's giving me a blessing that was rightful to me. Why? You're just a sinner. You should be just thanking God that he even had this small amount of grace to show to you. Instead of you thinking that I deserve this, I deserve this, I deserve this. Then, just like that, since he loves you as his child, he's going to take it away to make you wake up. And once he takes it away, what are you going to do? I know what you're going to do. You're going to be like just Israelites. You're going to be just like you. You're going to be complaining to God. God, you put me in a place where I have to give up my faith. <laughs> I mean, if, if, if you were God, doesn't it sound like kind of like a, it's like oxymoron. It's like, it doesn't even make sense. You are where you are just because you accepted Christ and you're safe. And you're telling me that because you're so selfish in your ways that you didn't get the blessing you think you deserve, that God's losing out because you're thinking about leaving the ministry, you know, giving up the faith and stuff. They don't care. God is always who he is. He doesn't need you. Amen. But you need him. Yes. So don't ever fall into that state, you know, where, where you don't remember who you are. You need God. You need Lord Jesus Christ. You need the word of God. But he doesn't need you. He doesn't. Don't ever mistake him like you're, you're something where God needs you. He doesn't. He always have workers waiting. You don't want to do it? Someone else is going to do it. Yes. No. If I give up faith and leave this pulpit, someone else is going to do it. Whom God has prepared. But thank God that he has given me opportunity. Thank God that he has given me blessing and grace and mercy. Amen. Same thing with everybody else. Yes. So if you feel like, ah, I've been such an important part of this ministry. People are going to miss me if uh-huh. I leave. I'm not going to miss yeah. you. Because time passes by. It's like, who are you? Who are we talking about? Nothing. Because God always replaces it. You know, that's how God works in the Word of God. When workers of God leave, God always has someone else. When someone quits, God always has someone else. When someone rebels, God always has someone ready. So don't ever think that you're so special that ministry is going to miss you. God, God already has everything in place. God already knows the future in the first place. Amen. Right? Yes. You know, God knows when you're going to die. You know, God knows your heart, and God knows when you're going to leave the ministry because of your own selfish pride reasons. Yes. Huh. So, just remember that, man, I've been such a fool. I've been foolish where I thought I was more than what I am, which is like nothing. Yeah. You know, I said I'm less than nothing. So you and I are less than nothing. Amen. Just save sinners. So don't ever, as a Christian, as a child of God, lose that joy. Yes. Right? Even if you are in the gutter, most, you know, worst state in your life, you still have someone who's going to provide all your needs, who's going to give you comfort, who guarantees that you're going to, he's going to provide all your needs. Because end of the day, worst thing that could happen to you is what? You know? Go to heaven yeah. in your mansion. I mean, this earth is just passing by. Who knows, sure right? You, know, you might die tomorrow. I might die tomorrow. You know, we eventually are going to either get raptured or die. Yeah. But thank God that there's something eternal waiting for us. Amen. Then remember who you are. You're going to be child of God forever. Remember who you are. You're going to be in heaven forever. Yeah, remember who you are. Man, if the Lord calls, comes back early, you're going to be raptured. Then shouldn't you be, yes. you know, your perspective should be every day you wake up, man, you'll be like, oh, man, I'm so happy. Joy, you know, man. Lord might come back today because I'm his child. Then 
you wouldn't be that, you know, this dark cloud yeah. always hovering around your family, around the church, good, around anybody, yes. right? Because you are not your own, your body of Christ. And that's why I always say it. You might be hurt, don't matter. That's why I always say it. If you don't like our ministry, I mean, you don't like how churches run, independent local church, go somewhere you like. Where are you here? Right? right? Yeah. No, I'll see you in heaven if you're saved, right? Yeah. But, I mean, don't be here messing up our ministry. Just go somewhere else where they believe the same way you are. they happy about the same way you are. They're down with the same way you are. Just join that group. And then do not pollute the people here who wants to serve the Lord, who wants to grow in the Word of God, who wants to be used by the Lord, who knows who they are. Then, you know, think about it. Even the car is objecting to it, right? Yeah. It's like, eh, I don't want to listen to it, you know. Why? Because there's someone in this room or listening has that thought. Either you get right with the Lord or find a better place then you remember who you are, yes. right? If you know you're a sinner saved by grace, not looking down on anybody, loving the brothers and loving the others as child of God, then we're going to serve the Lord and we're going to do things for the Lord like Lord wants us to with the right heart. But if you are the leaven, either you get right with the Lord, take that leaven with you and, you know, go somewhere else. That will help the ministry because history of the word of God, history of the ministry, people who do not remember who they are, God will deal with them eventually. And then it will be dealt a lot of times publicly. I mean, when people who rebelled against Moses, right, yeah. Israelites, they were publicly judged. Yes. Yeah. Think about it. So if you don't get right with the Lord, eventually, you know, Lord says, time's up. Either you're not here or you'll be, you know, publicly probably shamed, you know. But we don't want that to happen to anybody, right? We want everyone with one mind, right? Amen. One unity, yeah. serve the Lord. Then in order to do that, you and I have to always remember who we are and don't let anybody Alter who you are, yes. what you are. Don't let anybody think otherwise. Amen. Because all they're going to do is put the seed of discord in your heart to rebel against the church, ministry, pastors, pastor's wife, the brethren. And you're just no better than safe sinner used by the devil. Right. I want to be used by God. I do not want to be used by the devil. I don't want my legacy and I don't want my testimony at the judgment seat of Christ to be sinner, saved, but used by the devil. You want to be that servant. We always say it. Wouldn't it be great? Well done, that good and faithful servant. And that servant will always know who they are. Nothing but a sinner. If you don't change anything this year, but at least change that, right? Yes. Your character. You don't look down on anybody. You don't look up to anybody. Treat everybody the same. Just how Lord had compassion on everybody. Yes. Have compassion on saved and unsaved sinners. Yes. And realize what a great opportunity. What a blessing, you know. You know, it's like words can describe how you are a child of God. That should bring smile and joy to you, even during the hardest days of your life. Because I actually have my Lord in my heart. He said he'll take care of me. What can man do unto me? If it's an impossible situation in your life, remember who you are. Child of God. God has done many impossible things, especially for child of God. And that's where faith comes in. But you and I, 
serve, and worship Almighty God. Amen. The only God. Yes. And he saved you and me from hell. Thank you. What more do you need? Nothing. That's it. And we live each day trying to do the word of God, do what the Lord says, please him, yes. have right relationship with him, and everything else will just work itself out. Amen. Don't worry about other things before you worry about where you are as who you are with the Lord Jesus Christ on a daily basis. Let's remember who you are this year and until the Lord comes back. Let's pray.